So, yeah. good afternoon. Thank you, John Fred, and thank you for the organizer. I really hope this could be the start of a big collaboration between US and ECHO. Can I start asking, raise your hands, how many of you are aware about ECHO? Can you raise your hands? Let me see. Okay, very nice, a big, big number. So, in reality, you should know that you have two past ECHO president working in US. One is John Fred, one of the very first, and Dan Holmes working in, in uh, UCL, in, uh, in California. So let's look at ECHO structure. ECHO is a very democratic organization. You see that in the framework, outside, there is the General Assembly. Each member of ECHO has a right to vote, to be active part of the scientific society. This is something very interesting that has been, start, from the start, has been really a key fundamental pillar of the society. Then, of course, there is a governing board. You see that these are all the major function. And uh, there is an operational board and a strategic council. The operational board are pretty much all the key people, all the key committees that are involved in eco activities. So the scientific committee, the educational committee, the surgical committee, pediatrics, nutritional, dietitian, young eco, nurses, clinical committee. So this has been really a blossom of activities towards the society uh, for many, many phases of IBD care. Let's look at guidelines. This is probably one of the things that has been one of the major activities that has uh, uh, promoted the society. This is uh, a multinational consensus working group that is very comprehensive. And actually, this is something that is always ongoing. There is always updates for the guidelines. Of course, there is monitoring for the conflict of interest industries are not at all part of it. And uh, this is based not only on IBD experts, but sometimes there are external experts or uh, national reps. So when I say uh, external experts, I just give you an example. When uh, it was done the uh, infections guideline or the cancer guideline, we have invited experts from hematology, from infectious disease, or from cancer oncology or hematologists in order to give us a hand because we are not experts in these areas. So this has been really a key process that has been built with other specialties. And this is uh, overall the program. So you see that in general what happens is from the planning, from the guidelines, from the title, there is a call. It's open to everybody. Any ECHO member can be part of it. There is a formal application. And after there is an application, there is a committee, the first committee that is, uh, starts to, uh, to do literature search. There is a voting through round system. And then after the voting, there is collection of the voting. There is a revision. Then there is the second round of voting. And after this, the paper is submitted to JCC, our journal. And after this, of course, the paper uh, is, uh, uh, comes out for publication. And uh, we are not so electronic driven. Basically, the voting is by race hands. This is just an example of, uh, of the panel. And uh, what happens is that on the second round, all the national representative of all the countries, generally there are two national representatives for each country, do a second round, this is online voting. So this is part of the process until the guidelines then are ready for publication. And this is just to give you a flavor of the publications that have been occurring. The pediatric, the imaging, histopathology, endoscopy, nursing, and so on. So this is, uh, is very, as I told you, this is in multiple aspects of IBD care. And uh, this is uh, the, the typical uh, thing that is always open because the promotion of ECHO is to make accessible to everybody. This, I think, is a key ingredient of the success of the, of the ECHO guidelines. And uh, after the guidelines are ready, the guidelines are also implemented in this uh, ECHO e-guide in which there are simulations of clinical cases through which, through the guidelines, you can through algorithms process where your patients will fit. So I think this is an additional step on, uh, step forwards for, uh, for the care of the patients. 
We will move and we will change a little bit from the process. This will become a little bit more complex in the future. This is the, the call for 2017-19, and we will move towards the great methodology with the PICO questions. So this is something that we are actually learning from the Americans, and I think this will put the quality of the guidelines in a much better manner. The only thing is that we will need to implement involving more methodologies, librarian, and patients, because with this methodology, we need to have also patients on board in order to build uh, uh, the, the proper guidelines. So after giving you a flavor of the doctor's guidelines, I would like to show you also something that we have recently done. These are the ECHO patient guidelines. These are done with the EFCA. This is the European Federation of Prone Scolitis Patients, basically your CCFA, but in Europe. And actually, this was something very interesting because it was an activity. You see, these are some of the pictures when the presentation was made. And uh, what is nice is that this is a guidance for the patient to make aware about how the patients are treated and what are the standards that can, they can have. They do, want, do not want to replace the doctor guidelines, but, it, but is made in a way that is in lay summary to make the patients aware on how are the treatments that are available for their disease in a more scientific manner. And I think this has been also a very nice thing because again, this was translated in most of the languages. We are not lucky as you are because language is still a big barrier in Europe because of the many countries. And this was a big effort in order to have the translation in each country for, uh, for the patients. And this is the final part that I will touch. This is the learning platform for ECHO. There is the, an e-learning that is very active with the ECHO IBD curriculum. This has been built uh, in order to create a concise but complete curriculum for uh, making doctors experts in the IBD field. And actually, this is uh, from the start of the idea. This is a very recent process. As you can see, it started in 2016. And uh, from the conception up to the to the definition from all the committees, in particular in this case is the educational committee that has been particularly involved in this activity. And then of course there are multiple uh, activities that uh, doctors can take, the e-course, the talking heads, the webcast from the best lectures of the Congress. And uh, of course in, re in relation to this, uh, uh, also this goes to, publica to publication towards the journal to JCC. So this is uh, very active and actually the doctors at the end will be able to have uh, multiple topics to which they can uh, learn from general understanding of the disease, diagnosis, assessment, all the aspects of the IBD care. You see, this is just a list of the fundamentals in order to be an IBD specialist, and this is uh, uh, up to the novel therapies. So I think this was uh, just an overview, and uh, I think that uh, you can come and visit. You are all invited to our Congress that will be in, uh, in uh, Vienna, February 14, 17.